Right, somewhere very close to St. Peter's Church was the castle, and I'm just looking at this up here, high-ish. The railway station's over there somewhere. It's probably going to be signposted. I'm just wondering if this is the site of a castle. As well as a church. I don't know. It is, it is raised up high. I am very, very disappointed though. I'm, I've taken some photos. There's a lovely old cross there, look. I mean, this is linked with the Anglo-Saxons, this place. My times 25 great-grandfather is mentioned again. I didn't know he was mentioned on this church, although I've probably got it written down. <laughs> I didn't know he was... Uh... It's funny how the, uh, earlier there was a police chase. Not non-uniformed police officers with cufflinks and everything whizzing along chasing a a young man who was very fit and very fast and they couldn't catch him. He, he went past me at 100 miles an hour, this young man. He leapt over a gate, a wall, and then all these policemen and the sirens. He was called Harry and all they kept saying was, he said, I'm not guilty. And, and they said, well, why are you running then? Because obviously he'd had... But it just seems... I've seen a lot of uh, very unfortunate people today hanging about the church. Um, they do feel that that's one place where they shouldn't be chased, to be quite honest. It's supposed to be a place of sanctuary. But of course they lock them up. Yeah, I'm just wondering. And there's also this lovely park somewhere that I've got to try and find. I'm not wasting my time when I'm here. I've had it wasted by only been able to see the outside of these beautiful churches and this is a beautiful church it's quite different from the other one the Holy Scepter there's also a house along there that was once something to do with Oliver Cromwell and the Battle of Northampton and all that um, I'll just walk along here and it might be able to see the back of it So this is me, I'm in the heart of uh, Northampton, wandering around on a beautiful sunny day. I mean, we haven't seen the sunshine yet. I'll just give you a view of what I'm facing. It's all like this, actually. A mixed match of buildings, new and old, um, chimney pots. Then you've got like forests, you've got great big cinemas. Um, oh yeah, there's the back. That's the back. Just go up to it a minute. That's the back of what's um, apparently where Cromwell once stayed or something. You can see it's old by the yellow sandstone brickwork. Um, welcome to the Looking Glass Theatre. All oh, right, so it's a theatre most of the time now. Yeah, there was a plaque out the front. Um, there was a plaque at the front. Yeah, like a little plinth there, look. It's kept its lead windows. But it's just wedged between all new, new, um, structures now. This would have all been very medieval in the past. Yeah, so just a little bit more history. There's, there's an awful lot of history here in Northampton. Um, and I've, I, mean, I mean a lot of history. This is a place of great significance over a thousand years or more. Um, one day is just not enough. I tried to cram in a lot, right? It was also renowned for its shoe and leather making. There is a museum, but I I didn't put that on my priority list, I'm afraid. I'm, I was mainly looking for the medieval stuff. And I've had a really good, as, as you know, I wander around a lot. Um, there's no, I, put, I, I, I paid for all day. 
Um, so it took a, it probably took about hour to get here. I think maybe hour and a half. It is quite a, ain't really a long way. So there's the back of the building again. I've taken lots of photos. There's lots of little faces, little figurines. They go all around the top. Same on the other churches. There's lots of um, illustrations. That's a spooky one, isn't it? Look at that. That almost looks alien, doesn't it? The frightening evil spirits way. I think they did that. Um, so it's a lovely, lovely little church St Peter's is, and I would love to have got inside it. No one's replying. It's a sunny day. I suspect what they've done is they've all gone out in the sunshine. <laughs> a lot of it is run by volunteers, by the way. Oh, and I just go over here. There's a little plaque. A lot of it is run by volunteers. And they haven't got enough of them. Right, oh, that's a handy little plaque, isn't it? Look at that. If you don't wander around like I do, you miss all this sort of thing, you see. Different views. Oliver Cromwell associated place there. You miss all this if you don't wander about. So, what have we got here? This site marks the beginning of the town of Northampton. This site marks the beginning of the town of Northampton. In the early 8th century, it was the centre of an extensive royal estate of Minster, or Minster, a complex of buildings and land belonging to the church and to the Mercian kings. The area belonging to the church and to the Mercian kings. The area experienced a further transformation in status with the building of a large number timber hall to the east of the present St. Peter's Church, probably in the late 8th century. This was replaced in the 9th century by an even larger stone hall. As Mercia shrank in the face of the Viking invasion, the buildings and estate served as an administrative centre for the Dane law, covering an area roughly the size of the present county of Worcestershire. The later stone hall itself probably survived in use until the late 9th or early 10th century, having been abandoned either on the arrival of another Danish invasion in the last quarter of the 9th century or became the settlement and was reorganised when it was captured by the Saxon army of King Edward in 917. Right. Famous figures from history are associated with this place. The Anglo-Saxon soldier Saint Ragnar said to have been executed by the Danes alongside King Edmund christened 870 is reported to be buried in St Peter's Church King Canute <coughs> may have met and married his first wife Ethel Giffa she was <sighs> called the Woman of the North of, from Northampton and became the King's re Regent in Norway and mother to Harold I, King of England. Despite its changes of fortune as a fortified border state by the end of the 10th century and possibly earlier, Northampton was a real town with its own mint. It extended over 60 acres of land to the north and west, complete with its own defence walls. Right, I'll take a picture of that then. Just turn off for a minute. Uh, right, here we've got another church, St Peter's. Also shut. Absolutely shut. Padlocks, you can't get in. You can't even get in the grounds. It's all 
totally locked up. It's really annoying. Can't get in at all. It's a lovely day. I don't know why they're not open, these churches. It's ridiculous. Um, this church of Saxon origin and St. Peter's Church. St. Peter's Church is one of the finest examples of Norman architecture in the county. Erected around 1170 by Simon de St. Liz, first Norman Earl of Northampton, on the site of an earlier Saxon church. Close by archaeological excavations reveal that this was the site of an early Saxon settlement about 400-650 AD. Important mid-Saxon finds indicate that this could be the original Hamtown settlement, a centre of some importance, being a royal estate that grew into an important Danish town about 900 AD. So I've recorded that and I'm very, very disappointed. I have come all the way from Somerset to see these churches and none of them are open. Doesn't they... You can't even get in the gate to go and take any photos of the outside. The proper, proper ones. That's two important churches now, founded by one of my um, 24 times great-grandfather, Simon St. Liz. It's got ancient history before him as well with the Anglo-Saxons. And no one's replying. I have spent nearly £10 in phone calls to try and get a hold of someone to come and open these churches up. There's no one even replying. It's really, really annoying. It's a beautiful day as well. And it looks a lovely Norman church with a little square tower. It's called St Peter's. Um, I'm recording this as well because uh, this is the second time today that I've come across a church not open. The other one said it would be open. I waited an hour and a half. No one replied and nobody came. And they wonder why the churches are falling. No one wants to come in them. If you keep people out, no one will ever be interested in these churches. They're padlocked. They've got high security padlocks on them. You can't even get in the grounds. This is a beautiful church. And to be quite honest, they wonder why people don't visit. Well, why, how can you? They lock it up all the time. It's a beautiful church. I'm very disappointed, I am. I should write this all over the net later. I've come all the way from Somerset. What a waste of time that was.